It's nice and quiet around here. Where are the other children? They're playing hide-and-seek with Victor. Oh, Babar, there's something I should tell you about that chair. Mm -hmm. What's that, dear? Home! Oh. Home! Home! Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. One, two, three, on! Whoa! <laughs> <sighs> There's no place like home. Hmm, I should think the beige morning suit would be ideal for the literary meeting. Hello, Pompadour. I've come to pick up Victor. If you'll just wait here, I'll collect him for you. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way. It's not trouble. It's simply palace protocol. Everyone must follow the rules. Besides, I don't want you snooping around. Snooping? Me? Basil? Basil! Whoa! <gasps> I'm here to see the King of Celesteville. One does not just waltz into the royal palace and expect to be granted an audience with his royal highness without following the proper palace protocol. You must tell me your name and state your business, then I shall properly announce your arrival. Show me to the king! <gasps> now! <laughs> call the guards, Cornelius, call the guards! What, what seems to be the uh, problem? Come with me. The king will see you immediately. But Cornelius, the protocol! Whatever happened to the protocol? Wait to see you, Daddy! <laughs> you have to be careful where you sit around here. <laughs> Baba, please, come quickly. It's about the coin. <laughs> Mother, who is it? I don't know, dear. What does he want? What's he doing here? Your father will find out. Baba. Aye. And if you remember the coin, you'll remember the vow. Yes, I remember. The King of Celesteville will grant the bearer of the coin anything he wishes. <laughs> without question, without compromise, as agreed. <laughs> what do you want? A ship. Ready for me by sundown. You will have it. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. What's well, very interesting, Basil? Shh. <laughs> Baba, did the visitor bring bad news? He brought something even worse. He brought this. A piece of an old coin? Do you remember many years ago, shortly after we completed building Celesteville, our people were stricken with a terrible sleeping sickness? Yes, I remember. The sickness hit suddenly, and with such a vengeance, it threatened to wipe out the kingdom. I had almost given up hope. Then finally, we discovered a cure. But there was a problem. The ingredients necessary to make the medicine could only be found on a small island far across the seas. Celesteville had no ships at that time. Cornelius and I knew of only one vessel that could sail to the island and return quickly enough to save our people. A pirate ship. We were forced to make a deal with the captain and crew, whose deeds of treachery were legend. Their leader was the infamous Captain Sanga. Sanga agreed to bring us the ingredients for the medicine. But in return, he demanded that I grant a small favor to him and his crew. He divided a gold coin into three pieces. 
and made me take a solemn vow that, as King of Celesteville, I would grant the bearer of each piece anything he wished, without question, without compromise. I had no choice but to accept his terms. Sangha did bring us the ingredients we so desperately needed, and when he and his crew sailed off without pressing any demands, my wildest hope was that neither they nor the pieces of that cursed coin would ever find their way back to Celesteville. The crocodile who returned the piece today was Sangha's first mate, but there are still two more pieces of the coin which may turn up at any moment. This is what comes of bargaining with pirates. But Baba, you had no other choice. You did what you had to do. You saved your people. Yes, Celeste, and for that I am thankful. But I fear that when the next piece is returned, We'll just have to hope that the demands are not too unreasonable. You know, Basil, this gold coin thing rings a bell. I've got it. I've got it! Wonderful, Your Highness. What have you got, sir? It! Basil, I've got it! Help me. We got to find it. Yes, Your Highness. Uh, what are we looking for? Don't you remember, Basil? Many years ago. Many, many years ago, you were there that night, in that sort of quiet retreat for uh, intellectuals, for uh, gentlemen of style and sophistication. From time to time, the gentlemen there engaged in contests of skill and daring. It was the night I had an unexpected challenge. The Crocodile. He was rumored to be second mate to the infamous pirate, Captain Sanga. Oh, it was a titanic struggle. Back and forth it went. Back and forth, back and forth. For three whole days. Well, at least 15 minutes. But in the end, I won, fair and square. You won, yes, I remember. Now, Your Highness, you won it fair and square. Exactly, Basil, I won it. Now, help me look for it. So, what is it that we're looking for again? What is it? Weren't you listening to the flashback? The coin is it. The coin! You mean that piece in the aquarium? Huh? There it is. All these years, I never knew how valuable this piece of gold really was. I always thought it was broken. Now, I can have anything I want from Babar. Anything! Without question, without compromise. Without anchovies. <laughs> come on, Basil. Let's go tell Santa Babar that Christmas has come early this year. <laughs> But, Rotexas, how did you get this? Never mind how I got it, Cornelius. It's what Babar's going to give me for it that matters. What do you want, Rotexas? What? Have you decided what you want in return for this piece of the coin? Uh, yes. Uh, uh... Lord Rotexas would like... Yes? 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 To stay here a day or so to think it over. What? He'd like to, uh, take inventory of everything so that he can make an informed decision. We'll start in the palace and work our way through Celesteville. This is ridiculous. Retaxas, you can't just move in and upset my family while uh, you decide what... What His Majesty is trying to say is that he wants your stay to be as comfortable as possible. Hmm. Very civil, your civil servant, Babar. Very civil, civil servant service indeed. Oh, Babar. Yes, Red Taxes. That's a nice suit. How do you think I'd look in green, Basil? Distinguished, sir. Very distinguished. 
Of course, we'd have to take it in a little, in the waste. You mean Ritaxis has come here to take whatever he wants from us, and we put him up in the guest room? This is insufferable. All we can do, Pompadour, is try to make Ritaxis comfortable for now, and hope that he doesn't ask for too much later. But Ritaxis? He's not... he's not... reasonable! That's an understatement. Then why should we cooperate with him? Because I gave my word, Pompadour. But Ritaxis could ask for... anything! Pompadour, I know all too well how far Ritaxis might go, and what that may cost the people of Celesteville. Oh, I like these! These flowers, and the hedges, and the grass. I like the grass. And these stairs. I must have these stairs. I wonder where they lead. After you, Your Highness, we must see everything before you can make an informed decision. Carpets, drapes, plants, piano, piano and bench. Come to think of it, I especially like this wonderful music room. Music's in my veins. I need someone to play the piano, of course. Make a note of that. Someone to play the piano. Ah, oh, Victor would love this playroom. Put down the playroom and all the toys and... Oh, look, Basil! Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Hi, Mr. Attackless! Very adorable indeed. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll uh, put it on the list, Your Highness. <laughs> Father! Father, when Texas came into the music room and said he wanted to take the room and the piano. Dad! And... Dad! When Texas said he wanted to take the banquet hall, he said he was going to take my bedroom too. What does he want my bedroom for? Those two maniacs! They ruin my bread dough, they eat my jam tarts, and they try to steal my cooking utensil. Not only that, they flatten my cake! Everyone, please settle down. His Majesty can't concern himself with every little thing. <laughs> Your Majesty! <laughs> These wigs are ridiculous, Basil. <laughs> <laughs> they are indeed ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Put them down anyway. You never know when you might want to look <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Sire, he's taken my wigs. And he he's can just father, take my father, spatula. Father, can he? You can't just take our things. Oh, my God. Isabel is very upset. <laughs> Isabel? What's wrong, dear? The taxonist said he was going to take my dolly. <gasps> Your dolly? This has gone far enough. Retaxas! Yes, Babar? <laughs> Retaxas, you are upsetting my whole family. You threatened to take Isabel's doll. That's not... that's not reasonable. You're right, Babar. I do want to be reasonable about this. The kid can keep the dolly. Fine. Say, this is your bedroom, isn't it, Babar? Yes. Why? You don't mind if I stay in this room tonight? I've found the guest room a little cramped. That will be just fine, Retexas. Very reasonable of you. Very reasonable indeed. But, but my wigs! He could ask for anything, sire. Anything! He could ask for everything. Everything? Retaxus is going to ask for my crown. My kingdom. Everything. But, but, if Retaxus were to become king, it would be the end of Celesteville. You can't let that happen! Pompadour, there's nothing I can do. I have to accept the fact. I have failed my people. No, dear. You never failed us. Whatever happens, we'll make the best of it. You must have faith. King Babar, Retaxis has made his decision. 
Mabar, Basil and I have made a long list of items we found desirable. A very long list. A very long list, indeed. But I couldn't decide what I wanted, be because uh, <laughs> I wanted everything. Fortunately, Basil came up with a brilliant idea. Well, that is, I came up with the brilliant idea. Basil merely put it into words. But, Texas, we have endured enough. I owe you one favor. Tell me what you want. Now. Well, if you're going to be like that, all I want is to be King of Celesteville! <gasps> Oops! Hey! What? Huh? Oh, bow to Retaxis, King of Rhinoland! And Celesteville! Ahem! <laughs> to Retaxis! Your Highness! Your Highness! I demand to see the King of Celestville! That's me! I'm the King of Celestville now! <laughs> what can I do for you, stranger? The last piece of the coin. Sanka. I'm afraid it's a perfect fit, Your Highness, Rhinus. Hey, wait a minute. Now, that's got nothing to do with me. The King of Celestville is bound to grant the bearer of this piece of gold coin whatever he wishes. Talk to Babar. He made the deal, not me. You're the king now, Retaxis. You must give this stranger anything he wants. Without question, without compromise. <laughs> well, sure, so long as he's reasonable. <laughs> What'll it be? Uh, how about a nice piano? A fountain? Some elephant statues? Pick something from the list. What I ask, what I ask is that you give the crown and the kingdom of Celesteville back to Baba. Yes! <laughs> Show these gentlemen out. Okay, okay. I was just kidding about the King of Celestville part. Uh, I'll settle for the swimming pool. How about a statue? The, the your VCR? Yeah! Cornelius, you had the third piece of the coin. But how? Well, it was the middle of the night. A few weeks after Sanga had delivered the ingredients for the sleeping sickness medicine. His first mate came to fetch me. It was an emergency. Sanga himself had fallen ill with the sleeping sickness. And while he had a plentiful supply of the ingredients, he needed me to mix them in the proper proportions to make the medicine which would cure him. And all that night, he drifted in and out of consciousness, holding on to life by a slender thread. But gradually, he regained his health. Later, Sanger told me he had been very impressed with young King Baba's courage. In return for saving his life, he gave me his piece of the coin, a safeguard against any unreasonable demands which might be asked of Babar in return for the other two pieces. Sanga feared that if his crew discovered he had given up something as powerful as the coin, they would doubt his leadership. I gave my word that I would not speak of it until the other two pieces had been returned. Cornelius, you've always been there when I needed you. Thank you, my friend. So does that mean you're still king, Daddy? Yes, dear, I'm still king. Thanks to Cornelius. Oh, good. Well, I was worried I don't mind telling you. Cornelius, how could you let us think that, that the worst was about to happen? I had no choice. I couldn't tell anyone. Pompadour, Cornelius gave his word. You could have told me. I'm sorry, Pompadour, but... Uh, I wouldn't have said a word to anyone. I think you're missing the point, Pompadour. You'd have my word. But, yeah, yeah Pompadour!
wait here. I'll collect him for you. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way. It's not trouble. It's simply palace protocol. Everyone must follow the rules. Besides, I don't want you snooping around. Snooping? Me? Basil? Basil! Whoa! to see the King of Celesteville. Uh-oh. One does not just waltz into the royal palace and expect to be granted an audience with his royal highness without following the proper palace protocol. You must tell me your name and state your business. Then I shall properly announce your arrival. Show me to the king! <gasps> now! <laughs> call the guards, Cornelius, call the guards! What, what seems to be the uh, problem? Come with me. The king will see you immediately. But Cornelius, the protocol! Whatever happened to the protocol? Wait to see your daddy. <laughs> you have to be careful where you sit around here. Baba, please, come quickly. It's about the coin. <laughs> Mother, who is it? I don't know, dear. What does he want? What's he doing here? Your father will find out. and quiet around here. Where are the other children? They're playing hide-and-seek with Victor. Oh, Babar, there's something I should tell you about that chair. Hmm? What's that, dear? Home! Oh. Home! Home! Oh, oh, oh. Whoa! One, two, three, on! Whoa! <laughs> Oof! <sighs> there's no place like home. Hmm, I should think the beige morning suit would be ideal for the literary meeting. Hello, Pompadour. I've come to pick up Victor. If you'll just... But in return, he demanded that I grant a small favor to him and his crew. He divided a gold coin into three pieces and made me take a solemn vow that, as King of Celesteville, I would grant the bearer of each piece anything he wished, without question, without compromise. I had no choice but to accept his terms. Sangha did bring us the ingredients we so desperately needed, and when he and his crew sailed off without pressing any demands, my wildest hope was that neither they nor the pieces of that cursed coin would ever find their way back to Celesteville. 
The crocodile who returned the piece today was Sangha's first mate. But there are still two more pieces of the coin which may turn up at any moment. This is what comes of bargaining with pirates. But Baba, you had no other choice. You did what you had to do. You saved your people. Yes, Celeste. And for that I am thankful. But I fear that when the next piece is returned... We'll just have to hope that the demands are not too unreasonable. You know, Basil, this gold coin thing rings a bell. I've got it. I've got it! Wonderful, Your Highness. What have you got, sir? It! Basil, I've got it! Help me. We got to find it. Yes, Your Highness. Uh, what are we looking for? Don't you remember, Basil? Many years ago. Many, many years ago. You were there that night. In that sort of quiet retreat for uh, intellectuals, for uh, <clears throat> gentlemen of style and sophistication. From time to time, the gentlemen there engaged in contests of skill and daring. It was the night I had an unexpected challenge. The Crocodile. He was rumored to be second mate to the infamous pirate, Captain Sanga. Oh, it was a titanic struggle. Back and forth it went. Back and forth, back and forth. For three whole days. Well, at least 15 minutes. But in the end, I won. And square. You won! Yes, I remember. Now, Your Highness, you won it fair and square. Exactly, Basil. I won it. Now, help me look for it. So, what is it that we're looking for again? What is it? Weren't you listening to the flashback? The coin is it! The coin! <laughs> you mean that piece in the aquarium? Huh? There it is. All these years, I never knew how valuable this piece of gold really was. I always thought it was broken. Now, I can have anything I want from Babar. Anything. Without question. Without compromise. Without anchovies. <laughs> come on, Basil. Let's go tell Santa Babar that Christmas has come early this year. <laughs> but, Protexus, how did you get this? Never mind how I got it, Cornelius. It's what Babar's going to give me for it that matters. What do you want, Protexus? What? Have you decided what you want in return for this piece of the coin? Uh, yes. Uh, uh. The first of three. After all this time. Yes, Baba. Aye. And if you remember the coin, you'll remember the vow. Yes, I remember. The King of Celesteville will grant the bearer of the coin anything he wishes. <laughs> without question, without compromise, as agreed. <laughs> what do you want? A ship, ready for me by sundown. You will have it. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. What's very interesting, Basil? Shh. <laughs> Babar, did the visitor bring bad news? He brought something even worse. He brought this. A piece of an old coin? Do you remember many years ago, shortly after we completed building Celesteville, our people were stricken with a terrible sleeping sickness? Yes, I remember. The sickness hit suddenly, and with such a vengeance, it threatened to wipe out the kingdom. I had almost given up hope. Then finally, we discovered a cure. 
But there was a problem. The ingredients necessary to make the medicine could only be found on a small island far across the seas. Celesteville had no ships at that time. Cornelius and I knew of only one vessel that could sail to the island and return quickly enough to save our people. A pirate ship. We were forced to make a deal with the captain and crew, whose deeds of treachery were legend. Their leader was the infamous Captain Sanga. Sanga agreed to bring us the ingredients for the medicine.